Verde Bio Holdings is ready to explode. What's up investors and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about Verde Bio Holdings, ticker VBHI. This is one of those stocks that I've been watching for months and has just started to take off and I can easily see this stock making huge gains in the coming weeks. So today we'll be looking at who exactly are Verde Bio Holdings. I will look at the very latest news and what we can expect in the very near term. Let's look at the latest investors presentation to assess the opportunity that exists here. I will assess VBHI's latest financial statements before we look at the charts and I'll give you my conclusion on Verde Bio Holdings. Before we get into the video, it takes a lot of time to do this research so if you find any value in this video can I ask you to smash that like button. It literally costs nothing but it helps me out so much. This company has been on the watch list for so long. And this is a video that I've been requested to do many times over the past 4 months. So show your support for the channel, hit the like button, which shows me that you want to see more videos on Verde Bio Holdings. I'm aiming to get 200 likes, help me make it happen. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any new content and again it's 100% free. What do you think of Verde Bio Holdings and have you invested? When did you hear about the company? Drop a comment down below. I want to point out that I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. Now let's get into it. Verde Bio Holdings is a growing US energy company based in Frisco, Texas since 2019 that is focused on the acquisition and development of high growth mineral rights such as oil and gas and select non-operated working interests in premier US basins. Verde currently owns producing mineral royalty and overriding royalty interests across the major basins of the US with current holdings in Colorado, Louisiana, Ohio, Oklahoma, Texas, West Virginia and Wyoming. Verde's management has established an exceptional reputation in the oil and gas industry as skilled and fair buyers of assets. They pride themselves on being honest in their dealings and together with their extensive industry experience allows VBHI to acquire top tier assets and build value for shareholders. The company is focused on providing strong shareholder returns through asset growth generated by acquisitions and opportunistic divesting of revenue producing assets. They offer a very simple service. Anyone looking to sell to Verde can simply send them information about the mineral rights which they wish to sell. Verde will analyze the assets and then if it fits into the company's strategic focus and goals they will make an offer for the rights. It's very simple. If you are new to Verde or you don't fully understand what they do, then this short video explains it all perfectly. Verde Bio Holdings Inc. is an oil and gas company with a business model which turns the idea of traditional oil and gas investing on its head. Let us think of it in real estate terms. What if you could buy a piece of land, let someone else develop it, build the buildings, and bear all the operational and monetary risk, yet you receive a portion of the revenue and retain ownership of the title? While well, this opportunity does not exist with brick and mortar real estate, it is a reality beneath the surface. And that is the foundation of Verde Bio Holdings' business model. Driven by the recent boom in technological developments, we can acquire producing minerals and royalties that do not just pay today, but provide an opportunity for generational royalties. Oil and gas minerals and royalties have been available for over 100 years, but have mostly been handed down from generation to generation. There have always been only two parties involved with producing oil, the Clampets, or mineral owner, and the billion dollar oil and gas company. Drilling operations and risks are shouldered by the oil and gas companies, and they are required to pay the mineral owners a percentage of the gross revenue from all oil and gas produced. This is called a royalty. Mineral owners are free and clear of any drilling costs or liabilities. They are just the subsurface landlords, and their tenants are billion dollar oil and gas companies that pay rent or royalties of what they produce. So here's how it works. Back in the day, you'd punch a straw in the ground and hope you hit a patch of oil, and the odds weren't in your favor. Shale formations take the guesswork out of finding oil and gas like a blanket that is many times larger than the old oil patch was. It is not patchy at all by comparison. The technology of horizontal drilling and fracturing technologies make these shale plays viable and dramatically mitigates geographic and geologic risk. We select various properties throughout the most active oil and gas plays in the United States. 
these shell formations blanket thousands of acres underground. But when ExxonMobil, for example, drills a well, they only must drill in a section or area where you own minerals for you to get paid a royalty. So, by way of comparison, ExxonMobil in this example is the tenant in our building, and they will pay us royalties or rent on what they produce. By purchasing tracts of land spread across various shale plays, Verde diversifies its exposure to different companies, different tracts, and different geologic areas. To learn more about Verde Bio Holdings and its unique business model, visit VerdeBH.com. So looking at their investors' presentation, we can see their investment thesis, which includes high margins with no capital requirements and limited operating costs drive continuous free cash flow. Core mineral assets under high quality, well capitalized pure play operators. Pure play operators have stronger incentive to develop assets. Deal flow concentrated on smaller, under the radar assets from distressed owners and direct benefit from technological advances to enhance oil and gas recovery. Their acquisition strategy is largely pure play. Operators focused on developing both developed and underdeveloped acreage. But they also use an opportunistic divesting strategy to sell off assets at significant profits, which will be reinvested. This is where management utilize their connections to retail market. Looking at their corporate highlights, Verde's mineral and royalty interests provide significant exposure to perpetual ownership of largely underdeveloped assets with zero capital requirements to, pro to provide sustainable free cash flow. They have completed 16 acquisitions across 8 states. They are completely debt free, which we will look at a bit more when we look at the financial statements and recent news. Many of their acquisitions were based on a $40 to $50 oil and a $225 natural gas price. As I'm sure most of you are aware, oil prices are on the up and expected to continue up to new all-time highs. And looking at the portfolio highlights, they have wells across each of these states, but are mainly focused on Texas and Colorado. And then the presentation shows the highlights from the company's current portfolio and interest rights. Where we have the Haynesville highlights and a Haynesville overview, the DJ Basin highlights and again an overview of the companies, the Permian highlights with an overview and the Powder River highlights. If you haven't already looked at the investors presentation, take a look at it, it's on their website, it's quite good. So Verde Bio Holdings is classed as delinquent right now. As we already know, when a company goes from delinquent to pink current status, this can provide a huge catalyst to propel the stock upwards. Especially with the new SEC rules regarding stocks that are not pink current with the September deadline. In just the past few days, VBHI has become penny stock exempt, which can only be seen as a good sign. And only last week they filed their annual 10K report and a late filing notification for their 10Q. I fully expect to see the 10Q within the coming days. This will mean that they are up to date with their OTC filings and this will bring pink current status which will drive the share price up. Now the day after they got these filings made, the company issued a year-end shareholder letter. So let's take a look at this. On September 16th, Verde issued this shareholder letter. First of all, they note that they have encountered an unforeseen delay in filing of their 10K this year. This was due to accounting level changes that they were not prepared for, but that they now have the oil and gas accounting team and will not have these issues going forward. As commodity prices continue to rise, so does revenue and net profits. This is one of the best things about this strategy. Increased revenue with no increased cost to Verde or its investors. Then we can see here, Verde raised $10 million in five months through a successful Reg A offering. Management have deployed much of the capital into revenue producing assets. And to date, a total of 15 acquisitions completed and they are able to forecast significant revenues based on current oil and gas prices once they are in pay status on all properties. These acquisitions allowed Verde to post positive cash flow for the first time as a company. That is huge for the company. It's always monumental. It is always a monumental moment when a growing company turns the corner from loss making growth company into its first profitable periods. They show here that they've cleaned up the balance sheet by eliminating more than 1.5 million in convertible debt and are now debt free. Management are constantly evaluating potential acquisitions which complement the company strategy as well as seeking opportunistic divestments 
in which they can make large profits, while actively managing the portfolio to make sure that they are maximizing revenue based on current commodity environments. Looking forward, in the upcoming year, they look to expand the portfolio with strategic acquisitions, which will allow the significant revenues and also tax benefits. In my opinion, management seem to have a very clear vision about the direction in which they are going and the goals that they wish to achieve. They are also targeting uplisting onto the OTC QB or QX as soon as practically possible. But before any of this, we need to see that the company get the relevant filings uploaded to the OTC so that they can become pink current. That has to be considered the number one goal right now. Now, although management seem to have a clear vision about the direction in which they are heading in, it is vital that a company at this stage has the financial structure in place as they set out to achieve their goals. So let's assess the company's most recent financial statements that were released last week. This is a 10k annual report and as such these are auditor financial statements with a lot of detail. So first off the auditor's opinion. In our opinion the financial statements referred to above present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the company as of the 30th of April and the results of its operations and its cash flows for each of these years in the two year period conform with GAAP. So first things first, the auditor have not issued a modified or qualified opinion so this is all good from the auditing point of view. Now let's look at the balance sheet. We can see here that the company has total assets of $3.2 million and total liabilities of 560000 This gives Verde an asset to liability ratio of more than 6 to 1. Of this, current assets amounts to 2.2 million, which is mainly made up of 2 million in cash. So that's fantastic to see. Looking at the income statement, we can see that for the year ended April 30th, Verde had recorded minimal revenue of only $48,000 and recorded a total net loss of 3.3 million. So if you follow my channel, I like to look at the salaries that the management team give themselves, especially for companies that are in the growth stages and have not yet achieved profitability. My reasoning behind this is for the company to grow, the CEO and other executives should be investing as much money as possible into growing the business, not into paying themselves big salaries. Looking at item 11, executive compensation. We can see here that CEO Scott Cox took a salary of only $80,000 for 2021 and a further 204,000 in stock awards. This means that the majority of his pay for the year is linked to the share price of the company and he has aligned himself with shareholders. It's fantastic to see executive management interests are aligned with shareholders and this is something that I specifically look for when looking at annual reports for OTC companies. Looking at the chart since the start of the year, VBHI is actually down more than 40% since January. Like so many OTC stocks, that hit their high points in February and March, this stock has been in decline, going under one cent in August, but has made significant gains in the past few weeks. Looking closer at the past few weeks, we can see that the stock had been moving sideways, making no loss or gains up until last week. As people became aware that Verde was about to file its annual report, the stock began to move up on Friday, before a huge gap up here on Monday, eventually hitting highs of over 0.016. This meant that Verde had gained over 70% in the space of just 3 trading days. Now the stock has pulled back a little bit to its current price of 0.0145 and I expect to consolidate around this price until we get the remaining 10Q filed, at which point I would expect another huge gap up for BBHI. It's worth noting here that I expect this 10Q to be filed within the coming days. So guys, that brings us to the end of the video. Before I give you my final thoughts, if you've watched all the way through, then hit that like button. It really helps the channel out a lot. If you're new to the channel, remember to hit that subscribe button and bell notification. Follow me on Twitter and join the Facebook group. All links in the description. So what do I think? This is a stock that I really like. I've been watching this stock for months now. This is a video that has been a long time coming and one that has been requested several times over the months. Anyways, I think that there's a load of potential here at Verde, and there is a lot to like right now. First of all, we have a management team that is focused on growth. They are not taking huge salaries, and the majority of director remuneration is in the form of shares, which is great to see, and it is also a very modest 
salary compared to a lot of OTC companies' executives. The fact that Verde is now debt-free is huge, and they have shown that their invest-divest strategy works. Back in August, Verde sold two of its assets, and from this they achieved approximately 84% profit from holding these assets for only three months. Upcoming catalysts are something that I love to see, and this company certainly has them. First, they have to file the 10Q, which will see Verde become pink current. This will propel the stock upwards alone, just like the 10K did, but also as the company moves towards uplisting, this will be huge. And they have a plan for many more acquisitions. In my opinion, all of this will drive the share price up and the future looks very good for Verde Bio Holdings. But this is just my opinion and if anyone is thinking about buying this stock, I encourage you to do your own research. As I said before, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. Thanks for watching the video. What are your thoughts on VBHI and what price target do you have for this stock? Leave a comment down below and I'll catch you in the next update.